I do live in Canada, but I'm from the States, and I love coming home. I love coming home because I always see or hear something crazy. Like, you guys know some people are still having a debate between evolution science and then what they call intelligent design. A debate. <laughs> it's not even the same conversation. It's like one guy going, well, nuclear reactions in the sun's core fuse hydrogen into helium. The other guy goes, that is a good point. However, sunshine feels like a warm, warm hug. <laughs> From Jesus. <laughs> Counterpoint. That's not the same conversation at all. And then, I, then I, saw, I saw a bumper sticker. This is in the southern states. I saw a bumper sticker that blew my mind. All it said, in black and white, all it said, this was the whole message. It said, abortion equals sign holocaust. <laughs> That's it. You guys are giggling. You're in good spirits. That's great. But I was angry, when I saw it, I was angry. I was like, come on. It is a woman's right to choose whether or not she wants to give birth to six million Jews. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of Jews, guys. Come on, six million? Six million, come on, guys. That is really hard work on the Jim Jam. Come on, six million. I'd have to do that like six million more times. That's a lot. That's a lot. I appreciate those of you that are still on board. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. It is my job to tell, though. I can feel, I can kind of feel that some of you guys are staring at me a little bit. Some of you are staring at me a little bit. Like... <laughs> Did that little boy just save a Jim Jam? <laughs> Why would he do that? He seems so nice. It's all right, guys. It's okay. I know what I look like. I know what I look like. I know because a woman came up to me on the street into my personal space and told me that she thought I looked like Justin Bieber. <laughs> Don't say it with me. Don't say it with me. Justin Bieber. Please, let me just explain this, all right? I am a woman in my 30s. I've had this sweepy haircut for a long time. Justin Bieber. If anything, that little girl looks like me, all right? Yes, yes. Sure, that bitch is on my turf and I don't appreciate it. Step off Biebs is what I say. In my mind, I just say that in my mind. <sighs> I'm, glad that I, I'm glad that I do comedy though because I can talk about this kind of stuff. I used to nanny, I don't do that anymore. I don't know if any of you guys have experience with little ones, like two-year-olds especially. If you know two-year-olds, you know they're really fun, really creative, really happy, really clever, but they're horrible people. They're horrible <laughs> if you know them. Two-year-olds are like tiny, crazy, homeless people. <laughs> just always staggering around, all toothless and stained, just popping up, saying crazy stuff. I'm a cat! No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a liar. <laughs> You're kind of gross. There's crackers up your nose right now. Gross. <laughs> Two-year-olds are like tiny, crazy, homeless people. Two-year-olds are the type of people that will look you in the eye and take a dump. That's what they do. <laughs> That's the level of human being that you're dealing with when you're talking about two-year-olds. Like tiny, crazy, homeless people. Always staggering around with their bottle. They can't complete puzzles for crap. Like, they're useless. They're useless. And I don't care, guys. I will use my time on stage to talk trash about two-year-olds, okay? I don't care. They're not here tonight. Screw them. That's what I say. That's what I say. Even if they were here, I'd talk trash to their faces. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of them. They have no information rattling around in their gigantic heads. They have huge, huge, disproportionately large heads have you why why do they have that's why they toddle because their heads are weighing them down they're just, 
He looks stupid. <laughs> I do. When I see two-year-olds, I'm like, go back to Easter Island, you freak! Because <laughs> their heads are so big. <laughs> All right. I don't want to deceive you guys. I know that the last part of that joke, like the Easter Island part, I know that that's not, maybe that's not hilarious. Um, but it is a comedy rule that you can balance out callous treatment of homelessness with one reference to a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we're back at neutral for that joke. And we can feel fine about that joke. There's zero, zero problems in that joke. Zero problems. Now on to the next joke. Oh, for the next joke, you need to know that I'm gay. Okay, and that's not a shock to anyone, is it? I forgot to come out. I forgot to come out. But I was, this does the work for me, right? Yes? Okay, so we're all on the same page. So, um, I need to tell you, I went to the museum. I went to the museum with my girlfriend, right? I didn't, I didn't want to go to the museum. <sighs> she wanted me to go, right? So I said yes. Because I like having sex with her, fellas. Do you know what I mean, guys, huh? <laughs> fellas, gotta play the game, right, guys, huh? <laughs> fellas, like women with their ideas and their feelings. Do you know what I mean, guys, <laughs> fellas, guys? Fellas, like women, can't live with them, can't punch them in the neck. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, guys? What are you gonna do? So, I just wanna be relatable. I just wanna reach everybody. I just wanna reach everybody. So, we went to the museum. My thing about the museum is I feel stupid when I'm there. I don't know how to respond to anything. They had a whole exhibit dedicated to mid 19th century furniture. Like that's it. Right? I don't know what to say. I'm reading this thing that said, the graceful and sinuous shape of the legs on this tete-a-tete epitomizes the Rococo revival style. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I would sit on that. <laughs> I would sit on that couch. That's the best we could do, right? I went to the portraits, and I thought, this will be easier, right? Portraits, faces. I have a face, I could do this. Till the guide came up to me. This is what he actually said to engage me. He goes, notice how the horizontal and vertical lines make symmetrical and otherwise asymmetrically posed female figure. <laughs> it's just like, Ah, uh, yeah. I would sit on that. <laughs> That's the end of my set. Thank you very much, guys. Put your hands together for Deanne Smith. Hey, guys. Um, I know what you're thinking. This is exactly what the inside of a Hannah Gadsby Babushka doll would look like. <laughs> I've been coming to Australia for a little while now, and I have a song about one of my experiences. So here we go. Here's a little story about an Australian cafe. I ordered a glass of water, but instead of just saying okay, the waiter said, no worries, ma'am, which I guess was polite. But to my North American ears, it just didn't sound quite right. I mean, it, it's just a glass of water. I'm not, I'm not worried about it, um, really. I think maybe if you just bring me the water, and, and, but you don't need to like project onto me that I'm having a mental process about the glass of water, because I'm not, I'm not concerned. I'm not even thinking about the concept of worry, but you've introduced it now, haven't you? <laughs> so now I'm starting to think, what would I have to worry about? And then I started to think, of all the things that could go wrong as he fetched my drink. What if he spits in the water? What if it's full of disease? Unless he's planning to do something weird, why would he say no worries? What if the glass is cracked? What if the glass is half empty? What if I get philosophical and I'm forced to confront my innate negativity? What if there's no meaning? What if there's no point to life? What if I choose to get married and they pronounce this wife and wife? It just sounds so gay. <laughs> what if he's not the waiter and this is some elaborate prank? 
What if my darkest fear is true and I'm the reason that my mom drank? I feel guilty all the time. <laughs> what if when I was vegan, I didn't get enough vitamin B? And all I did was annoy my friends and destroy my short-term memory. My mind never settles down and I never know true joy. What if even though I try hard to be cool, I always look like a little boy? Nerdy Justin Bieber, who's into it, ladies? Ah, uh, fellas. Very few people. <laughs> what if I mess up my taxes and the feds come after me? What if when I was vegan, I destroyed my short-term memory? What if I'm depressed, but it's undiagnosed? What if when I'm having sex, I'm being watched by my grandmother's ghost? I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm sorry. Um, or... You're welcome! <laughs> You crazy old bat. <laughs> what if when it comes, the water is too salty? What if despite the fact that I'm a moderately successful comedian and I have a lot of friends and I'm in healthy relationships, what if I never overcome the psychological damage I experienced in childhood? Not that I'm blaming my parents. I mean, they come from their own dysfunctional backgrounds and they just did the gosh darn best they could, okay? With the crappy hand that life dealt to them. But what if I always stay afraid and I label myself and my feelings as somehow wrong? <laughs> well, assuming that everyone else in the world is somehow right, so that even though my heart yearns for something deeper, my connections with other people ultimately feel kind of superficial because I isolate myself emotionally. <laughs> when the waiter comes, he arrives in a flurry. He says, sorry that I took so long. I say, hey man, no worries. <laughs> Thanks, guys.